as many of you are probably aware, there was some controversy a while ago around ContraPoints and her decision to go on a uh, panel to talk about trans issues at an event hosted by a right-wing organization. Uh, which, by the way, was really relevant when I started writing this script, I, I swear, but but anyway, uh, this has caused many people all over the left to condemn her for various reasons. What, what's more is that after all of that, it was cancelled anyway because fucking Blair White flaked out on everybody, but but anyway, as much as I'd love to be some kind of leftist drama alert, you know, grab the popcorn and start reading off tweets, uh, this video is mainly actually going to deal with a lot of the issues brought to the forefront uh, by all of this controversy. And by that, I am referring to, uh, is debate effective for the far left? And when is it okay to engage with the far right on these terms, taking into concerns of uh, possibilities of legitimizing them or giving them platforms? We should clarify before jumping into all of this, uh, this video is only going to be dealing with the instance of live debate where both sides have the objective of quote unquote winning. The way I'm going to talk about things here is going to make it seem like almost there's no way for people to possibly change and form ideas through arguing with other people in any way ever, but of course that's not true. It requires more than just simply good faith. It also requires, again, both sides not trying to win. This is why debates from within ideological groups often are so much more productive in actually changing uh, the viewpoints of who you're directly arguing against, because there's no competition involved. Debates with competition, as it were, are only ever about convincing the audience, not the opponent themselves. But with all that out of the way, let's delve into the left's relation to live debate. Now, time and time again, the main point I see brought up against engaging in live debate is that they're not actually match up for rationality, but rather just tests of charisma and general debating skills. As such, with the right matchup, a creationist who knows how to appeal to an audience can look like a beacon of rationality compared to, say, a chemist researcher who can't form sentences without being tied together with a ridiculous amount of ums and ers. In this particular instance, though, there's already enough information elsewhere that the audience normally would have been exposed to to know that, despite the poor debating skills of the scientific side, it's still the correct one. In instances where the audience isn't as informed on the details of each side of the debate, i.e. most political debates, it really does come down to which side can appeal to them the most. Perhaps in the depths of university campuses, you might find two PhD students just reading quotes out of books at each other to get their points across, but that's not really how live debate works, and especially on YouTube, as I'm sure you know. And it doesn't really matter how rational you personally are, being biased towards the guy who's more charismatic is just something our brain can't help but do. So debates really aren't about rationality and truth at all, leaving these things online at least to be left to extensive and well-researched YouTube videos. Does this mean that debates aren't effective though at actually convincing people? Not at all. Unfortunately, regardless of how much simple spectacle live debates are, it doesn't change the fact that people are still convinced by them. They can still contribute to both the growth and decline of political movements based on how they're being seen by the so-called floating voters. As such, it, it's pretty much self-apparent, in my opinion, that debates are worth engaging in, even if they're not wholly rational affairs. Just think of them as extended rhetoric. <laughs> yeah. Besides the fact that this is just how debates are to begin with, they do actually put the left at a particular advantage just due to the nature of the left. A lot of leftists will say that left-wing ideas aren't really suited to live debates because they're too complicated and require too much nuance to be packaged into succinct and appealing ways for the debate format. Personally though, I don't think there's anything inherent to the ideas themselves that make them too complicated. Otherwise, we'd never be able to have our own rhetoric, our own propaganda, but we do have plenty of that as the left. I think this touches on an issue that's actually more explained by the society that we live in. Our ideas aren't complicated because of the ideas themselves, but rather the contexts that they're being presented in. Whenever a radical tries to challenge the predominating order of things, be it social or economic, they have to deal with not only uh, fighting the system itself, but then also fighting against these pre-existing assumptions that people already have around things, or their common sense as it were. Of course, us being on the left, we also get to deal with decades of propaganda fought against us ingrained into people's minds, uh, but you know that's just what we signed up for when we became leftists, I suppose. And again, this isn't just about capitalism versus communism, but this applies to left-wing social ideals as well. This is why the whole concept of the free marketplace of ideas is just so naive, because it assumes that all ideas start on an equal playing field, when some are going to appeal to people's unconscious assumptions better than others, their pure ideology. So, live debate is hard, and it's not something that the left naturally flourishes in. But unfortunately, 
that's not a reason not to do it. As we've already established, live debate still convinces people. So it's not just something we can back off from because it's too hard. It's just something we need to get better at. Plus, avoiding debate altogether is way worse in terms of optics than just not getting your ideas across very well actually in one. I mean, it doesn't matter how well you explained that live debate just isn't a very good format for our ideas, the writer are going to take what they can get and run with it, making us out to be unwilling to engage in dialogue or our ideas that just aren't good enough to stand up on their own or whatever bullshit, you know. The thing is as well, I'd say we as the left need to dispel this rhetoric around us, but it's not even really rhetoric or a stereotype a lot of the time because it's kind of true. A lot of people on the left are very tepid to the idea of debate. Even if a lot of the time people's concerns about it are justified in having, they're often handled quite badly to the fact that it does look like we're just not interested in any dialogue or that we're too scared to have our ideas challenged. And obviously that's not true. You know, I'm a leftist, so it's obvious I don't think that. But we need to change these attitudes from within the left before we can actually go about breaking out of this negative stereotype. On a quick side note too, as it's been pointed out by others, one of the reasons it can be so hard to actually convince other leftists about these ideas is due to past experiences some people have had with other people who have been saying more or less the exact same thing. I'm sure Lacey Green comes to mind for a lot of people there. And, you know, I personally would say that Lacey Green was never a leftist to any kind of extent, but it, it's undeniable that she's definitely had an interesting uh, progression over the last couple months. And one of the reasons I kind of wanted to make this video was to make these points about debate coming from a Marxist position that's a lot harder to label as on the fringe of right-wing sympathy. Anyway, though, we've established that rationality doesn't really play into debates too much. And on top of that, the odds tend to be stacked against us for us simply being the left to begin with. As such, debate has to be a question of tactics for us, seen from a very pragmatic point of view of what will and won't aid our movement from engaging in. But we just can't afford to have that mindset. We have to look at only what will and won't aid us as a movement. Incidentally, debating with an actual self-proclaimed fascist doesn't tend to be too productive anyway, but if the opportunity arises in which it can be, we can't hesitate to argue about whether it's right or not to do it. We just have to go ahead and do it. It's funny because a lot of leftists actually do have the foresight to recognize what will and won't uh, aid the development of a fascist movement, or liberals in comparison tend to just hand them their goals on a plate. But then these same leftists never realize the benefit of applying these same methods to the left. At the end of the day, both the far right and the far left are both populist movements. What this means is that they grow as political movements in the same way. Uh, what benefits the far right can also be used to benefit the far left. So does this mean that we should bring ourselves down to the same level as fascists and use the same methods to gain popularity? No, of course not. Uh, okay, but just between you and me real quick, like, don't tell the centrists or anything, but, but fuck, yes, like, what what the fuck? Yes, obviously, if, that's, if that helps us, then that's what we're doing. Like, fuck, there shouldn't even be a discussion. Like, I mean, guys, we all stress about how bad it is to platform fascists, which it is. But then why don't we push to get on our own platforms as well? We all agree it helps for fascists to spread their views, and we need legitimization just as much as they do. So why don't we just do that too? Of course though, it's also a trade-off. Any engagement that we have with the far right has the possibility to boost their visibility or legitimacy as well as ours. So we need to pick our battles carefully, lest we bring attention to ideas that otherwise wouldn't receive them for our own bigger platform. However, as it currently stands, this is actually rarely a problem because the left has very few sizable platforms. So the question of the possibility of platforming coming from the left isn't usually worth worrying about. And this leads me to something again that a lot of leftists will bring up when debating fascists is the possibility of legitimizing them. You know, making their views seem like views that even deserve to be debated in the first place. Unfortunately though, these leftists seem to forget that it's not really up to us which views do and do not deserve attention from us. This is because history clearly shows that there's nothing inherent about disgusting ideas that prevent them from becoming very popular in society. We don't get to sit back and say, this is so obviously wrong that there's no debate to even be had here, because these types of far-right views are gaining massive popularity across America and many places in Europe. Right-wing populism is undeniably a legitimized position in mainstream politics right now. And trust me, there's very little we can do as the far left in our current size right now to aid this legitimization even if we wanted to. But is it even worth going through the effort if you're not going to be able to convince who you're arguing against or their audience? Well, obviously such debates don't take the highest priority. 
but if it's being hosted on a large platform to the left, then it could still be worth engaging in. This is because there's another dimension to debates to decide to directly convincing people, and that's general optics. As the far left, this is extremely important, as our optics are kind of terrible around this subject. We need to go out of our way to get debates on large platforms, even if we know we're not going to there and then uh, convince many people at the time, because it's going to, in the long run, help to dispel these ideas that the left don't want to have a dialogue. And right now, this stereotype is aiding in the growth of right-wing movements, because when new people come into politics who are ignorant to how things are, uh, the, the idea that the left just refuse to debate their, their ideas does push people to the right. I don't know it's stupid, but the fact that it's stupid doesn't change that it's happening. Even beyond optics as well, there's a case to be made that the left or uh, particularly oppressed groups should make the effort to debate the far right simply as a means of standing up against hatred for their existence. Now, as it was largely the controversy around ContraPoints that prompted this video to be made, we may as well use one of her recent debates as an example of this. She recently participated in a large group debate hosted on Lauren Southern's channel, and as if she isn't bad enough, this other YouTuber there, uh, who I can't remember the name of, was really unequivocally uh, an outright fascist. <laughs> sure. Uh, what I'm talking, the change I'm talking about is, is going back to the natural order of things, the natural order ordained by God, which prevailed in this great land up until just about 50 years ago. So in, our so country, in your culture, in your culture what, 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 what would happen to someone like me? Uh, you would yeah. probably have to see a doctor. You would probably have to see I already a doctor. Oh, I mean, there are some fun fair and let's all Oh, so you give me conversion, conversion therapy. therapy. <laughs> you, you put me through electroshock therapy, wouldn't you? Now, I can't exactly read ContraPoints' mind here, but if I had to take a guess, I suspect that the principle of simply standing up to the far right rather than anything else was at play at bringing her on to this debate here. So I suppose the question arises of was this debate worth participating in? And Personally, I'm almost inclined to say not really. I mean, the whole debate was honestly a mess, with ContraPoints not really even talking that much and leaving early anyway. But the thing is, the productivity of the debate isn't really what's important. And this is pretty much the only context in which I'd say that. All that really matters is that ContraPoints herself, or the group of people she was trying to represent and standing up to fascists to feel satisfied in it being done at all. Because this isn't really being done for the sake of the right or even the centrists. It, it's being done for the group standing up themselves. Look, and not for nothing, but the founders, the founders you roll out. You know, you're, 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 you're blocked on Twitter for a reason. I'm not afraid of you. That's why I'm here. I think you're pathetic. Okay. Yeah, okay. So fuck who are calling for my death and the death of all trans people. Yeah. Fuck oh, you. Fuck I'm not afraid of you. I so, never I, so what about everybody else? What are you to do about debate? Well, firstly, I'd say debate more. Seriously, the, the left has hardly anybody debating at the moment, so if you feel knowledgeable and confident enough, then just get into it. I mean, random Discord servers dedicated to online debate are actually great for this, and they're consequence free if you fuck up. I mean, I will say though, you know, debate isn't for everybody, and you don't have to feel bad at all if you don't want to debate. Because debating isn't just a hard skill to master, but it's also fucking terrifying. And very nerve-wracking if you're not the type of person who usually does public performances and stuff like that. It's time-consuming too, because you have to do the research before the debate, have the several-hour-long debate itself, which of course drags on for as long as possible because whichever side is the first to suggest that you might want to end of the debate at some point is also the one that has the connotations of like they're losing. And then if it's a higher profile debate, you have to deal with the uh, aftermath of the debate itself, like what people thought, what they're uh, reading, the comments, and like it, it is very time consuming. Honestly, actively wanting to debate people on a live platform requires a mix of self-hatred, attention seeking, and being able to deal with uh, social and performative pressure, which is a very hard mix to obtain so if you do have that then i urge you to start debating anyways guys um that 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 was this video so i i hope you enjoyed it a lot do let me know what you think in the comments below because this is an interesting discussion to have maybe i'll debate somebody over it but <laughs> um uh, also you know leave a like and subscribe of, of course but of course you were going to do that anyway so why i'm trying to remind you but uh, now seriously so um i will say you know if you've reached this point in the video uh, you might care a little about what I'm about to talk about here. So basically, um, this is the first video I've made in like a month and a half now. Um, so yeah, sorry about that, I guess. <laughs> um, I, I've i been so busy with uh, uni stuff, you know, um, in particular, like, you know, 
the, the, the last two weeks before term ended, it was just assignments all the way through, like lab long reports, worksheets, all of that stuff. So I've just been focusing on that. Uh, and then of course I've come back um, the, the first week after coming out from uni as well, I had the flu, which was terrible. And I was going to make this video during that time period before Christmas, but obviously I couldn't. And it was Christmas and now I've just managed to find time after all of that to do that now. So I'm sorry about that. Um, that we haven't made a video in a while, but but we have now, and hopefully it, it, it's good. I know this wasn't too, I guess, uh, flashy or anything, you know, no skits, not too much uh, interesting stuff, just me talking to the camera, but sometimes that's not that bad. Um, but, you know, it just in, 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 in case you are bothered by that, I will tell you that there is uh, a lot of good stuff coming soon, uh, particularly... Um, uh, so I'm going to be doing a like video on the labor for your value and it's going to be very very good It's going to be collabing with an actual joke who is an awesome youtuber who you will find out about when I do that And they're going to be doing animations for it. It's going to be very good um, And then I also want to do on top of that um, If anybody follows me on Twitter, you will know that I've been reading the road to serfdom I'm gonna do a video going through the main arguments of that and I'm gonna throw in some shade against fucking Jordan Peterson um, I actually can't say his name without saying fuck to say it's up to green. Like, it's great. Um, that's going to be good. And I've got like more stuff uh, that's going to see me through for months after that as well. And that, they're all going to be really, really good videos. So there is stuff coming. I've just been horrifically busy recently. And I'm going to be horrifically busy in the future because I have exams coming up. I've been an idiot. I've decided to switch to theoretical physics and regular physics because apparently I just hate myself. Well, no, I just kind of hate the lab more than my own well-being. But, you know, um, but, but yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you had a, all had a wonderful Christmas. I had a great Christmas. I got, I got this fucking jumper. It's, it's great. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful new year. So, yeah, thanks for watching the video, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.